What is up, my dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason, here for a very special gas presentation edition of Fireside Chat. Uh, I have some incredibly special guests who, who you know. Uh, I wanted to just take a minute to introduce myself. Uh, I know m some of you guys might not be part of what we've been doing. Who is this guy with these legends? Uh, like I said, my name is Mike Mason. I've been flame working since 2013. Uh, around 2015, I started doing like a little webcam show with some friends. Uh, a, a really amazing community grew around it. It led to the opportunity to cover the 2017 gas conference, which was kind of stacked with pipe makers. And uh, they extended to me the opportunity uh, to stream this kind of for, for our community of pipe makers. Uh, in the meantime, uh, some amazing events kind of opened their arms to this community as well, uh, specifically the event that we're going to see tonight, uh, Glass Vegas. Another one was East Coast Melt. Uh, so a huge shout outs to them. Uh, but both of these events gave me an opportunity to kind of get my sea legs uh, with, with covering glass. And the gas conference uh, by that point, you know, I, I was really able to provide this high quality coverage of these demos with artists like Calm, uh, Piper Daniel Benway, uh, really amazing lineup that year. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to mention that because the opportunity to share this demo that we're about to see is like my glassy life of you know of media kind of coming full circle. Uh, the opportunity to cover that conference is really what set this whole thing off. Uh, my work you can see at TorchTalk.com. Uh, I'm a marine artist in my own right. Uh, you can see that at Instagram.com slash Mike Mason Glass. But I really, I wanted to take a moment to thank the, the Glass Art Society for kind of um, reaching out to my community and, and what I've been doing. Uh, I want to thank specifically Robin Rogers uh, and Charlotte Potter, who I, I know were kind of the local, and they looked into my glassy heart and, and saw that what I was doing, you know, uh, was was right and gave me the opportunity to do something very special. And it, it really is what led me to cover the borosilicate world, um, you know, give it this ESPN level style of coverage. So that's what you're going to see uh, here briefly after this. And I don't want to talk about myself anymore, but I just wanted to let you guys know like why I'm here with these amazing glass workers and to thank the Glass Art Society for, you know, allowing me to be part of this. And, you know, I, I hope I can share more in the future. But yeah, just a huge shout out to them and, and, and my appreciation. So with that said, uh, let me introduce the incredible Robert Mickelson, uh, one of my teachers, um, man, a legend in, in the glass game. And you've been doing this since the 70s. Um, Robert, if you'd like to just briefly introduce yourself, kind of tell tell this gas audience what you're about. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Mickelson. I have been a flame worker since 1974. You do the math. And um, I've been making pipes since 2011, which is coming around 10 years now. Um, I don't know. I, I could talk all night about myself, but I choose not to. <laughs> I'm just real <laughs> glad to be here. I had a lot of fun at Las Vegas, and uh, I'm going to be part of this virtual conference. I'm going to be attending as well as, I guess, presenting. Yeah. So I'm very excited. Wonderful to be here. Great, great. And yeah, uh, to your right or your virtual left, whatever it may be, is the incredible Windstar Glass. Uh, Shayla, you're, you're a friend and somebody who's you know, been so kind about letting me put a camera in your face over the years. And it, it's really been an honor to kind of cover you and, you know, document your rise or whatever you want to call it. But uh, you're an artist that I really, really respect and appreciate. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you'd like to tell them a little bit about yourself before we get into this demo, I, I, that would be great. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. You're going to make me blush on camera here. <laughs> um, so my name is Shayla Behrman. I go under Windstar Glass. You can find me on Instagram at Windstar underscore Glass. I've been blowing glass a little, a little more than seven years. I've been into art my entire life and super honored to be uh, doing this virtual demo here at the Gas Conference. And uh, Glass Vegas is a super special event. I enjoy going there every year, seeing my friends people that I admire and look up to. And last year was incredible. I got to work with Robert, who I've always loved his work. And it's a really cool event. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
anyways, let's go ahead and pop this party off uh, with the actual demo where we're going to see these amazing artists create like a functional Anubis rig um, with sculpture and uh, shaping of, of the, the body. There's so much going on here that, that, that I'm really excited to share. Let's go ahead and get this started. And Robert, at this point, you were coil potting glass is the technique that it's called. Is this one that, that you know mostly in the Boro world, or do soft glass people do this as well, or other COEs coil pot, or is it just us? Um, actually, I think that uh, coil potting is pretty much exclusive to borosilicate. Uh, soft glass, uh, furnace glass blowers uh, gather up a different way, gather on the end of a blowpipe, and are able to make bubbles uh, in a di completely different way. This is sort of our answer to that. Uh, since most of our raw materials comes in the form of rods, and sure. we need tubes. This is a quick way that we have of making tubes. There are a number nice. of other ways we can do blowouts, uh, et cetera, but here I'm coil potting. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And this is similar to the ceramic technique as well, right? Where the material is literally coiled and now you're going to get it hot enough such that the striations and the difference in the, the stripes all cooks into something yeah, that's, homogenous. That's where the term comes from, in fact. Coil potting is a ceramic term, cool. clay, clay term. That is what I thought. And you're making the glass to sculpt a head, is that right? Uh, yes. At this point, um, I'm you know my, I'm tasked with building the top of this rig, which is the statue of Anubis, which is an, an Egyptian god. I'm using blackjack is the color that I'm using here, and so I am starting off by creating a bubble and uh, puffing it out, and then I'm going to shape it into the head of Anubis. Nice. And I've lost thirty pounds since this was recorded. <laughs> that is noted yeah uh, you know and the camera does add 30 pounds so you know. I, yeah i know so i'm so, i'm way skinny now yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's working against you very good now while you're doing this i did have some questions that i wanted to lay on you guys um you know, normally we just focus on the technique here, but since I have such special guests and a, a Glass Art Society crowd to entertain, I thought we might step this up a little bit. Um, Robert, you know, you're famous in, in our world, the pipe making world, for challenging artists to justify pushing that bowl. You know, why did you push a bowl and take it from a piece of sculpture, you know, into something that you can smoke? And I have to ask, is, is this something that you ask yourself now that so much of your work is functional? And have you ever had a nightmare where one of your pieces came to life and asked, Robert, why did you push a bowl in me? Uh, no, I've never had a dream like that. Okay. And I'm not sure I'd characterize it as a nightmare if I did. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I, um, I, I ask myself that question constantly. It, 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 I believe that uh, all artists should should ask themselves that question. Um, if it's art, why does it have to have a bowl in it? Sure. Um, if you've ever watched the movie uh, Degenerate Art, Slinger's movie, um, he gears that whole movie around asking and answering that question. And I'm proud to have played a role in that movie where I ask the question and then the question is eloquently answered by Jason Lee in the next scene. So it's a uh, that's what makes that movie such an interesting movie, but uh, obviously, making pipes has been something that has really grabbed the whole of me. I was reluctant to get in at first because I first wasn't sure I'd be welcome, and second, I wasn't sure if I was any good at it. Um, but as it turned out, I was invited, <laughs> okay. and so I, I was invited by some of the people that I had taught, right, that had taken classes from me. Mm -hmm. And so but once I got into it, I discovered there was no dabbling. It, it, it was all or nothing. I had to be in it 100%. And so I decided, yeah, I'm going to go all the way with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did because it's been incredibly rewarding. Um, my career has been completely revitalized by this. And I have learned a ton. Uh, I started making pipes in 2011. And in 2011, I had been in this business for 40 years. And... Um, I'm a 10 times better glass blower now than I was in 2011 because of everything I've learned, learning how to make pipes. Hmm. And so kudos to the people who uh, invited me and put up with me. 
yes, I asked myself that question, but uh, I, I don't regret a minute of it. I love making pipes. They're very rewarding. They're the most challenging and rewarding type of glass vessels I've ever made. And uh, I can intend to continue doing it. I'm going to make the very best pipes that I possibly can make. That's my goal. And I'm having a ball doing it. Did nice. I answer your question? <laughs> ah, no, that's a great answer. It's, uh, you know, I, I would have been remiss if I didn't ask that question because it is, you know, it's, it's I get asked all thing. the time because of the movie, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, totally. People are it's... critical because of the movie because I, you know, had a few beers and I had my <laughs> arms crossed and I was like, I don't know why they have to push a ball into it. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's a legitimate question. It's still in 2021. It's still a legitimate question. Sure. And anybody should have an answer to that question. Right. If right. If, if it's art that you're about, why does it have to be a pipe? Yeah. Gotcha. There's, there's got to be a reason. For me, there's a reason. Sure. I really like making pipes. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got you. Mine is. I'm just trying to keep counting all this damn money. You know, not just playing. <laughs> well, the money's part of it. The money's part yeah. of it, and part of what propelled me into pipes was the fact that the uh, part of the industry that where I had done my marketing for so many years was in a state of collapse at the time. But it is no longer in a state of collapse. It's actually doing quite well, and okay. I have no intention of going back to that exclusively, simply because I like being a pipe maker so much. I, I like got gotcha. you. Now. Um, I'm a follow up on that comment you just made. Uh, as much as as we're here at the gas conference sharing an incredible pipe being made, and um, at the same token, though, do you do you think that you would would take any uh, take a little slack or t you know get a little guff if you were to go back to that world and they'd be like, oh no no Robert, you you're you're that that pipe guy now. I don't know about this. Do you, do you think you could float freely between those worlds without any judgment? I could, yes. There'd be no judgment. I'm, you know, a lot of people are under the mistaken impression that the uh, glass art society and the glass community in general is down on pipes. This is not true. It is not. No longer. It was a while back, but it is no longer true. Sure. Um, sure. I've been telling pipe makers for a year now. Hey, you guys won. <laughs> Globally, uh, sure, you guys sure. won. You, they have, you have won everybody over. Gas is in. 100% the gas is centered in uh, Washington, which is a legal state. And that's why they. Uh, this is all part of the conference now. Um, that's great. I think a far, more, a far bigger issue is the pipe makers accepting other glass artists who are not pipe makers. I think it's sure. even is a bigger issue. That, okay. uh, because of the way it was in the past where pipe makers were not accepted, there's a little bit of... Um, What's the right word? It's not revenge. Uh, there's a, <laughs> there was a just, lingering bitterness. How about there's that? There's a lingering bitterness, yes. <laughs> and, and, and I uh, would like to try to overcome that because, you know, we all work the same. I feel sure. like uh, me, uh, Raven Sky River, Shane Farrell, Roger Paramore, Banjo, mm -hmm. we're all on the same page here. All these guys, we all work glass in different ways and different mediums, but we're all on the same page. And there sure. should be mutual respect all the way around for everyone. Word. Yeah, well said. Well said. I want a Shane Farrow bird with a little bull pushed in the belly. Whatever. <laughs> uh, you can ask him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what he'll say. <laughs> Is he ready for that yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's coming up in a few years, guys. Don't just we'll get him. We'll get him. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and now at this point here, you're you're sculpting out this head. Uh, you're using a butter knife, is that right? Yeah, I'm working on the nose, I believe. I'm kind of tweaking the nose out. Anubis has a yeah. very distinct pointed nose, and okay. uh, it's it's very angular. It's kind of like a Doberman's nose, except even more exaggerated. Okay. So I'm trying to shape it up, and and I'm intending on punting up to that part of it to work the back part of him. So I have to leave a little bit of extra material on his nose so I can grab mm. a hold of it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, very good. I know it's hard to see in the video. That's the thing about flame working demos. It's just sure. not like the hot glass demos where you can see everything so clearly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I give my uh, zoom lens quite the workout. I'll put it to you that way and do my best to kind of reveal these details. Well, that, you know, it's like playing a video game. Once you're zoomed yeah. in that close, you know, to make it still watchable because every, all, every movement is so much harder to follow and such. But... Anyways, yeah, one that, of those 
Anxiety mm-hmm. clips. Okay. Anxiety clips, see, because they, they really help a lot. <laughs> yeah. Camera, and he yeah. has like ring filtered ones that fit. So anybody out there, if you want to document your own process, um, yeah, Aura Lens sells those. And then, yeah, Diddy Clips is the other one. I think it's Travis uh, Weber. Yeah, Travis Weber. Okay, very good. Yeah, um, and th- he makes one that fit that'll clip over uh, phones. Like Aura yeah. has one too, but it's too small for the newest phones. The newer phones have much, you know, like the multiple camera setups. Uh-huh. The Diddy Clip is great for that. Um, if you're using like a, ca- a ring filter camera, you know, like an SLR or a camcorder that has a ring adapter, uh, you can order those in whatever size you want uh, right. at Aura Lens. So I would I would recommend those and yeah, yeah that really does help me kind of slice through the uh, through the, the the sodium flare which is mm-hmm. the orange glow that you see if you guys out there aren't familiar with what's exactly happening there um, although I will say if you're filming uh, for consumers I think the orange flare is kind of evocative and they like that you know so it's something to think about but if you're trying to document glass process for other uh, glass workers. I think it's completely critical. Yeah, I just got one of those Diddy clips, and I'm really enjoying it. Nice. Yeah, they're cool. Works great from my Galaxy, big old cameras. I've been, I've, I've been pronouncing it Diddy, Diddy clip. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 got it, I got it wrong, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we, it, it's one of those things where we've all been calling him Dididiums or whatever, but you know, you get the right guy in the room who really knows what he's talking about, and we could have been wrong this whole time. Even you, even you say it wrong. It's Didymium. Didymium. Okay. See, so, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I'll I'll fix that in editing. Not just playing. <laughs> I'm from Colorado, so I'll just fuck it all up for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Virginia, y'all. Don't, don't mind me. I'm from Virginia, too. <laughs> and yeah. I like the way you use that butter knife as like a, a paddle almost to go through and shape that head. Yeah, it's like yeah. a resist for you to it blow against. It chills the glass. So what yeah. I'm doing is I want it to move. I, I, the flame can't heat specifically enough. So I heat a general area, and then I chill the area that I don't want to move. I can use the paddle or the butter knife to do that. And then what's not chilled will move. So I get the glass to move the way I want it to. That's beautiful. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And every glass artist that really is worth their salt or whatever um, has a butter knife that that's, <laughs> they use. You yeah. know, I mean, that, yeah. that particular butter knife used to be about, you know, like a regular butter knife length, but I keep grinding it down. I've had that for 40 years. It's an old <laughs> U.S. Navy ser- uh, non-serrated butter knife that I got at a flea market. Oh, way, wow. way, way back in the seventies. <laughs> oh man, that's really I still cool. Have it. All right, you might have just jumped to the top of my cool butter knife stories list. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yo, Shayla, I don't want to leave you out of the cool question game or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so check it out. Um, in the pipe making world, many of our parents would have rather us been doctors or lawyers, you know, something more respectable. But I know that you grew up in a family that owns head shops and is kind of part of this counterculture world, which makes me wonder, did you ever consider becoming an accountant or pediatrician as an act of rebellion? (laughs) Yeah, um, so I actually went to college for about five years and was going to be uh, majoring in business management for quite a while. Um, Okay. That was fun. I hated it. Uh, Okay. It was awful. I got it. And, uh, okay. I went back to college right before I had my daughter to be a uh, elementary school teacher. Okay. And uh, about two semesters in, I found glass blowing and immediately dropped out because it was like love at first sight. So. Aww. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my got mom's you. a strong businesswoman, and she always wanted me to go into business and do well for myself. And I don't think she ever imagined that I'd be a pipe maker, but. Okay. Complaining at this point. I got you. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. I'm glad that I asked that. That's 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 actually pretty interesting. I didn't know exactly what point at which you kind of turned to the flame. Yeah. No. I uh, I had my daughter, and about a month later, my mom had me start blowing glass in her head shop. And uh, yeah, from that point on, I wanted nothing more out of life than just stare into that flame. Nice. Nice. That's great. I think that's the case for a lot of us. Um, 
I transitioned out of a career doing web development and product development. And, you know, once, once I hit the torch, man, I, that's, I knew I'd made the right decision. Yeah. It, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, you either give it all, give it your all, or it's going to take it all from you. So. Okay. Yeah. I know that. I know some people that happened to as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, man. It's a dream worth chasing. It's, it's just the bottom line on that. Now, Robert, you, um, you did like a, kind of a blowout there to thin that out at a really specific spot so that it could be attached to the body of the Anubis at a very specific angle. Is that fair to say? Um, yeah, the, the attachment point can't, be square. I mean, it's easy to get openings and stuff that are square, but when you're making a sculptural attachment like that, it has to be shaped according to the way the sculpture is. And so that's what I was doing. First, I puffed out the, the bubble at an angle to remove material, and then I refined the shape of that opening with the shears and then paddled it down. Very cool. Now, Shayla, this is this is some of the, the glass drawing. You, you do it both flipped and, and surface drawn. Mm -hmm. um that's some of what you're known for there just included a little bit of that action uh because i popped over and had it kind of at the right timing and i think you were working on the joint there before and now you're kind of setting up the can to be sealed to another section is that right yeah this is a can that i had pre-prepared for the demo it's probably got about eight hours worth of work into it right there okay. um and then I'll be attaching, I believe, some black onto the bottom to build out this can that will then assemble Robert's Anubis head onto. So. All right. Very good. And yeah, you know, I think it's it's just one of the more impressive things about your work that you're you're not one dimensional with, with these drawings. You're able to to convey that into these comprehensive, you know, large scale functional pieces as well. It's like a combination of, of you know, two different types of, of skill I think is really impressive. Um, back to Robert here. Yeah, I was, I was challenged really early on into my glass blowing and uh, went to my first aid show and a glass blower I really looked up to at the time looked at my work and told me I couldn't just draw on glass. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I took that kind of hard and thought about it for a couple months and really decided that if I was going to do this, it had to be a, a good glass blower overall. And it's still something I'm focusing on today, whether it be function or shaping or sculpting or working on the stringer tech i feel it's it's really important to do good about all of it so that you can build whatever you feel like you need to okay your drawings like are on the on the outside aren't they Shayla? i do uh the surface work which is all outside work and unflipped and then i'm also doing flips and sleeves and other things depending on what i'm going to use it for but on this project they're all done on the outside very cool. Very cool. Um, Robert, I had a question for you. Uh, one thing when I learned with you that I really kind of remembered was that you encouraged us to take risks and not be afraid to fail. Uh, is there a piece or series of work you've done that you feel was especially precarious at the time? Besides this one I'm working on now? <laughs> yeah, that one did get, get, get crazy. <laughs> Yeah, nobody knows this, but I had to uh, abandon my uh, project halfway through the demo time and start over because it cracked and fell apart and I had to throw it in the water bucket. But we don't need to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we were, I was going to leave question, that in the secret file, but, you know. <laughs> in answer to your question, um, I think that glass has a way of, of humbling you. Right about the time that you think you've got it, and that you think, okay, I'm, I'm a badass. I've got this. The something will happen that will bring you down to earth. And the glass always just has a way of humbling you. And that humility in the long haul turns out to be a real strength. It's really important to, to keep your feet on the ground and stay humble and stay, stay calm. Um, I'm not saying this very well. The, the glass does that for you. If you aren't able to do that for yourself, the glass will do it for you. So all pieces are difficult that way. And that's why I say that if, you, if, if it's not difficult, you're doing something wrong. It should be challenging. You should be working at the very edge of your ability. Um, if you're doing something that's you know routine, and I can see that for some production work, um, what you'd really like to do is find a way to push it to the next level. You know, there must be something else you can do or add to, 
that that no one's thought of yet. And I think that's the really the real compelling work. Um, I'm a believer in learning. Every time I pick up a piece of glass, I'm learning. And uh, you don't learn from doing the same thing successfully over and over again. You learn from making mistakes. And that's another reason I feel like you should be pushing the limits. And, and there should be a lot of glass in your bucket, man. A lot of glass on the floor. There should be. Gotcha. I like that. Now, here you were just adding uh, very small amounts of glass to kind of give yourself that very specific angle. Is that right? I'm still messing around with the shape of the seal. Yes. Yeah, the shape gotcha. of the, the bat where the head and the body touch, they need to match exactly. I don't want excess glass. And so what I'm doing is I'm still working on the shape of the steel. Cool, cool. I'm able to do that here because it's pure color. There is no sleeve on the outside of it. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's, uh, there's no penalty for messing around with the lip uh, as much as I am here. I got if you. there was a clear sleeve on the outside, it would be all removal. I couldn't really add anything. Right. I was just about to ask if, yeah, you just pretty much have to get it and cut it down and hope you nailed it or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. All right. And here we are getting ready to uh, do some, some, some big seals, I would say. Doing yeah. big things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, speaking of big things, Shayla, you recently won the Pipe Classic Qualifier. Uh, earning a spot in one of the most prestigious competitions in our industry. Uh, have you put any thought towards what you'll create? And what is your process in general for preparing for a competition and conceptualizing your entries? Well, when it when it comes to Pipe Classic, it's a, it's a dream come true, first of all, to be competing in it. Right. And then when it comes to like what I'm going to make, honestly, I have no clue at this point. Uh, I try and walk into my studio every day with the idea that I'm going to learn something new, like Robert was saying, and kind of continue to up my repertoire. The other artists that are competing in it are incredible, amazing artists, and uh, it's going to be really a new experience for me to compete at the Pipe Classic because it's different than every other competition I've ever been in as well as compete against these other artists. So I'm just trying to gear myself up towards uh, building something new and unique. Uh, there aren't any, there is no prep allowed at the Pipe Classic. So that's another thing I've never really competed in is where you don't have any prep. You have just 12 hours to kind of just throw everything you can at this piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm really just, I'm working on honing my sculpting skills as well as other skills that I think would set me on a level to compete with these artists. The stringer okay. tech is beautiful and I'm really good at it and I can do it fast, but I'm not sure I want to spend four hours of a 12 hour competition drawing out a can. I got so you. It's, it's all, it's when I go into a competition, I really try and weigh like, what is the voting population going to like? What okay. can I reasonably do and uh, accomplish well? and mm -hmm. what time frame I have because there's always going to be something in a competition that like you aren't expecting whether it's a piece breaking or you forgot a piece of prep you always have to account for that and give yourself the time for accidents and the time to fix things um so that's that's all stuff I try and weigh out okay I got you so you're really like imagining the entire thing and giving yourself time if something goes screwy I'm with it. You guys should take take notes out there, homies. This home homegirl is a heavy hitter. She is like a ringer. Glass competition, <laughs> Maven for real. Um, yeah, and you know, in fact, I'll follow that up with another question that I had. Your track record of winning. I'm not kidding. I've seen you win so many things. That makes you like a legitimate threat in any competition. You're like Wilt Chamberlain. You know, you gotta uh, put two defenders on this person at all times. Or it's going to get away from you. So it makes me wonder, has anyone played any dirty tricks on you over the years? Um, you know, I've never had another competitor really play any dirty tricks on me. I've heard some stories before. Um, I will uh, give a shout out to Maddie White for definitely scaring me several times. Uh, <laughs> right before they go and announce the winners or the award ceremony or something, Maddie White would come up and be like, did you see the crack in your piece? 
<laughs> like the next 20 minutes, I'm sitting there freaking out because I've gone and looked at this piece like probably 50 times since it's come out of the kiln and yeah. I've tried it and I didn't see no damn crack, but so <laughs> there, there's friendly natured, we're going to fuck with you kind of stuff going on. But no, gotcha. for most of my competitors are all my friends and we're all there to help each other out. And we really do want to see good work come out of the kilns. So it's... Cool, cool. Well, that's what I'd hoped, but I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, you are the one who might actually, you know, somebody might feel the need to to do the, you know, Nancy Kerrigan thing or whatever. Kind of oh my thing. God. I left like, my knees. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> so here you added uh, a stringer of black, like a couple layers of that. It's like a lip wrap between these sections. Is that right? Yeah. I, uh, it's kind of my way of doing a nice little lippy. I like to do them in with stringers because it gives me a really small defined line and because I'm opening up that uh, seal so large so that I don't disrupt the stringer work mm -hmm. and it out, it, that fine line allows for that room for error that I need. Gotcha. And I probably didn't need to do that because I was sealing up to, I believe, jet black anyway. But sure. I think it's force a habit. And because I have clear over that surface section there, I wanted them to blend properly. Okay. Now, what kind of brush is that? That brush is made out of yucca fibers, which is a cactus that grows here in the okay. four corners of the region. I and gotcha. Altitude. And um, it was given to me at a champs game. No, no clue. The guy who made some said he doesn't sell them. He just gives them to people. So. What? All right. It's wow. Ridiculous. I want to get another one. <laughs> it sounds pretty hype. Yeah. If you like, if it were somebody you didn't like, you know, you'd be like, "Yo, this is this yucca fiber, but it's straight horse hair." And they're like, "What <laughs> piece?" <with it? laughs> all right, all right, all right. I gotta stop. I'm gonna be the one doing the dirty tricks, apparently. Apparently. Hey Mike, did you, Mike, did you get the part where I brought the uh, Anubis head over to Shayla to draw the eyes on? Yes, actually, that's coming that up a later? bit later. Okay, yeah, good, good, I've good. got some good footage of her doing those eyes. Yeah, some good. some fun shots of you know an opportunity to see her doing a different type of drawing there. Yeah, we've got that. We're okay, in there. Yeah, we're One in of the games. Pieces I ever drew on like that. Yeah. Pretty dope. Oh, I miss my CC. What, right, what are you now? using now? Um, right now I'm bouncing back and forth between uh, GTT Ninja and a 40 millimeter Herbie. Gotcha, gotcha. Are these... I'm sorry, Robert, go ahead. I wanted to ask you how you like the Herbie. I love it. It's, it's a great so torch, so isn't it? Oh my god. Treats... Uh, like, I love my CCs and... Uh, but I'm totally spoiled now having all these torches and seeing the different ways they interact and the way they treat color is amazing. Mm. Very, very cool. Now, is this going to be the base for this piece? Is this, what, what, which part are we, are you getting ready here? Yeah, I believe that's going to be the base for the can. Um, it's kind of dark. I can't see the orientation on the drawing right now, but normally yeah. that's yeah, it's the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, you did it's quite. Yeah, you did a chunk of glass on there. Yeah, I was gonna say you did some serious work on this piece. It was, it was. I knew it was coming. I just, I was trying to remember where we're at. Yeah, and it, I, got, I had to get that really hot and really work those seals in. And I, I'm gonna be blowing it out and kind of pre-shaping the way I want the flare of that can to go. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I thought this was really exciting. I, I was like, yes, I'm glad we had good footage of this part. Yeah, Gloss Bait, the, the Headlife Media got some really cool footage that they used on there, too. Made it look Very awkward. good. Yeah, yeah. That's a great yeah. shot there. I love it when they iris down and you can just see the hot glass. That's a Cheers, lot like man. what the glass blower can see. Yeah. I uh, On my newer camera, I've got that mapped uh, to a button that's right behind the zoom. So I can pretty much drop the exposure a bunch of, of notches at will. Which, yeah. you know... It's it, like I was mentioning earlier, I, like, I kind of referred to it as, as like playing a video game, you know, because sometimes, you know, like hit, 
It's like you got to zoom in smoothly, get into the right place, drop the thing, and then bring it back out. There's, and like when I hit the button at the wrong time, it's like fucking up a combo, you know, in a fighting game or whatever, um, because all of a sudden it just doesn't look right and it messes up the shot. So it adds like this level of complication, but it, it allows me to really uh, pick and choose when I want to drop that exposure when I know that it's going going to reveal important information. So. Um, yeah, it's, See, I didn't you know. get a chance to watch Shayla while we were demonstrating because I was busy. But this is really, I'm really enjoying this. Cheers, man. Yeah, well, I'm glad yeah. you could could uh, could could join us. And yeah, She's got this great is... control, uh, great control, and a uh, great control of her heat. The way the heat is set up in this piece right now is just perfect. Right to get that smooth blowout and everything. Yeah, yeah. for even that shape. Glass to redistribute itself the way she wants. That's very very nicely done. Yeah. yeah. And like Robert's saying, I'm, I'm basically setting up my heat base to tell my glass where I want it to blow out and to give me that shape that I'm looking for. Yeah. So back towards the middle of the can, is, it's, it's hot, but it's not near as hot as where I want that big ball to blow out. Sure. That's also helping join those two pieces of glass and make the wall thickness nice and even. Yeah, great control. Yeah, are these both torches you were mentioning before, Shayla? Are these ones you both won, or did you purchase uh, the Herbie? Where, where, where'd you get these torches? Uh, the Ninja <laughs> I won for the Pipe Classic. Okay, um, I figured. Yeah, it's it's pretty sick. It's all black, and yeah, I think I'm gonna call her Black Betty. And uh, the the Herbie I just recently purchased from an artist up in Colorado Springs. It's uh, tuned by Jason Howard, and he did a beautiful paint job on it with some flower life and uh, cherry blossom flowers. It's hot pink. It's oh, what? That's thing awesome. I yeah. Very and, cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a sexy torch. It is pretty sexy. And he gave me some hot pink di didiums to go yeah. with it. Yeah, I'm never saying that word again now, and I'm scared now. <laughs> I said it wrong for a decade before someone finally corrected me. <laughs> oh, man. Glad you checked me at seven and a half years in, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you learn nothing else today, guys, so that I don't know how to pronounce didymium. <laughs> I don't think any of us do. <laughs> Yeah. Like dicrylic. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Now, this is an important move. Um, all right, now, talk to me through what are, do you cap off the blow tube when you when you push a base like that? Um, no, I'm actually blowing into the blow tube while I'm doing that. Um, OK, gotcha. So I, am, I am pushing that wall out up against the the graphite pad that I have there and actually continuing to force that bell curve to go where I want it. Right now I'm really heating up the outside of the rim of that and then I'm also pushing some more heat into the center because I'm going to do one more push on it which will kind of give me that final flare. I might have done three but normally I try and aim for two. And okay. I don't put any air into it while I'm doing this. Like fine tuning it or whatever? Yeah, I'm checking to make sure it's level and it's straight, and I'm actually allowing the wall thickness of the can to kind of dip in a little okay. bit. Looks like I didn't quite get it, so I'm going to reheat it and do it again. Sure. I, I have a particular shape I'm aiming for, and I like my, my cans to be really nice and fat so that they, they're not going anywhere. They're solid. Mm-hmm. They, sit down comfortable especially when putting a nice sculptural piece on top right yeah this is a pretty big piece i like the idea of a wide base yeah i like my booties I have big <laughs> right <laughs> i'm no comment and good we're not responding <laughs> Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see that bell shape go out and that nice flare, and that's originally what I was looking for. Yeah, that does look great. It's got to be slightly concave in the bottom. You can see the chill rim as she lifts up, and you can see the bottom. There's a dark rim around the edge where right. it was touching the graphite. Yeah, that's quick. Now, that's is that just... 
Yeah, is that just for aesthetics and borrow work in your opinion, Robert? Or I know I know in like soft glass they call it like a kick and it's kind of almost essential for it to anneal properly, especially back in the day. Is that is do we just do I, it because it like because it looks good or like why do we do I, it in borrow? I, I do it. I don't know why other people do it, but I do it because it ensures that you have a flat bottom for it to sit on. If your bottom is actually flat, sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't sit as securely as it does if there's a slightly if there's a kick in it, okay. so it'll sit on that sit on the rim instead of on the flat bottom, and that way it will sit flat for sure. I got gives you. it a more secure seat. Yeah, I mean I've always done it. I just you know sometimes I want to get scientific about why. Yeah, back when I was working solids, I had a little dome shaped piece of graphite that I would use so that my solid bases would have a little kick in it too. Okay. And right here, I'm going to pretty much increase that kick a little bit. I'm just heating up that dome and making sure all my glass kind of levels out. And then I'll flip it upside down and let it drop in even farther. Okay, nice. And, uh, it's nice for the aesthetics of it. And then it also, like, having that bell dome shape go into your rig is actually better for the glass. Glass doesn't like to be flat. It doesn't like to have those angles. So if you let it dome in, it's actually structurally stronger. Yeah, yeah. And if you think about the way the water pools in it, it's causing more water to kind of go around it, which just kind of makes your your whole structure stronger. I got you. Glad this is all really interesting stuff. And it's not scientifically proven. That's just all stuff I have in my mind that makes it work for me. So. No, I, I think what you're saying is, you know, like I was mentioning, like it was like they had to do that kick back in the day or it wouldn't have survived the annealing. It's something I've, I've, I believe I've picked this up from like a Bill Gudenrath video or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. It's that, that arch structure and avoiding those angles like you mentioned. And there's everything you're saying there is pretty fucking sound to me. I think that's the moment where Robert came over and told me that uh, he had broken his piece. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assembling everything. <laughs> Word, yeah. Yeah, these things happen. Um, I believe, what did you call it? The curse of the demo, is that right? Or Murphy's Law of Glass Murphy's Demos, law, Robert? Murphy's Law of Demos, yeah. Uh, if gotcha. something can go wrong, it will happen during a demo. Of course. And the severity is directly proportional to the number of people watching. <laughs> that's great yeah that's i made a meme about uh, something like that but i think like the top one was like when you had somebody like you were attracted to watching that was the <laughs> yeah. that was the top of the exponential scale of likelihood of disaster so I have, be the most memorable demos that i've ever seen all involve mishaps I, and the best stories you know of, of demonstrations always involve something going wrong right demos yeah Demos that run perfectly are boring. Sorry. Sure. Are. It's like the NASCAR <laughs> effect, you know? They're just there. Yeah, exactly. crashes. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, I agree. Now, because that happened, um, I think that was actually beneficial because we get the opportunity here to see you. You're like combining some bubbles to make a new uh, body for the Anubis. We're going to get to watch you do some really fun sculpting and type of um, process that I, I, I know – my audience is going to love and hopefully a bunch of them are here with us watching so uh and you know for the wider audience out there i i mean the the man is a master just watch him do his thing it, it really is i had to do my thing and i had to do it fast because i'd lost half my demo time i had only 90 minutes and buy yeah. four sticks of blackjack <laughs> yeah and no. go back to the thing and start from scratch with only 90 minutes left. So I had to work fast. And yes, I'm combining two bubbles here for the body of the Anubis. And now you see, actually I got my game face. Until now I've been goofing around thinking everything's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I got my game face on because I don't want to look bad in front of Shayla. <laughs> I got you, okay, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. That's an important factor. You know, I, was, I always found the saying that pressure makes diamonds is probably more accurate for glass artists than any other industry I've ever oh, yeah. seen. You put us under pressure and we perform, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's beautiful to watch. Nice. Well, we're Incredible. we're geared for pressure. We we put pressure on ourselves every day. Absolutely. You know, trying to do things, trying to do the impossible. Sure. But we make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that.
<laughs> now, speaking of making it look good, though, uh, Robert, I've I've heard you speak about these attempts that you've made to achieve an organic aesthetic with glass that kind of gets past making it look good and failing. I wanted to ask for an update. Have you figured out how to uglify glass yet? Um, actually, not deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> All of that came from uh, admiring some ceramic work many years ago, and I loved the organic surface of it. And it, it, it lacked the polish and shine of glass. And I referred to it as, as uglification back at the time, but that's not really what it was. It was just a different aesthetic. And I was trying to achieve a different aesthetic. I've been working all these years in glass and everything's always shiny and pretty. And I wanted stuff that wasn't shiny and pretty in glass. So that's what I was trying for. Sure. And I have found ways to do that. I have. Um, there's certain frit and powder technique that you can use to get mm -hmm. very rough organic surfaces. Um, but really, it's just another way that glass is beautiful. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, in answer to your question, I've learned a lot trying to make glass do things that you wouldn't nor ordinarily think of it as doing. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of fun in that. It makes me think of uh, Kim Thomas Z, if you're familiar with her. Oh, yeah. She's a great example. Yeah. Yeah. Her work has that aesthetic that, especially with the Fritz you mentioned, it's, man, uh -huh. it, I mean, you look at her stuff and it, it just screams her name uh, no matter what it is. Even the recent stuff is like um, colloquial things, like a, just a, a chair or a shoe or, you know, things like that. And they, yeah, she, yeah she's really she's impressive. She's got a, a very specific aesthetic that's very unique to her. And I really admire that. Yeah. Yeah. Me as well. She's another person who we had the honor of covering at Glass Vegas. So yeah, shout outs to Kim. We really appreciate you. Yeah, her work's incredible. Blows my mind. So here you're setting up this kind of uh, conical shape or whatever to, to form that, that body or whatever. Is that, that yeah, what's going on? I think that's what I'm doing is I'm making the body here. I'm, I'm handled up to the bottom. Mm -hmm. the body is a, roughly a cone. Um, there's a little extension on the bottom that where it's going to attach to Shayla's can and you can see it right there. Yeah. And so uh, what I'm trying to do is just make, make the, uh, the body and I got to get the wall thickness, right. And I've got to puff out the end to where it's all about the same thickness and get the shape, right. So this is all about shaping and controlling the wall thickness. Gotcha. Gotcha. Guys, it turns out that my recording software was broken. We're going to have to restart. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, I'm going to step away for a second. I'll be right back. You guys can talk shit about me for that. We will. <laughs> so whatever happened to this piece? I still have it. I you was going to bring it to Las Vegas, yep. If it's that's finished, it. yeah, you got to give it to him because that's who it was for. Yeah, no, I'm bringing it, it. Did it finish? Did you finish it? Yeah, I got a. So I actually haven't seen it since I moved about six months ago. It's in a gun case uh, up in the closet. So I got to pull it out and check it out. But it was pretty much finished when I packed it up. Nice. So. I can't wait to see the see what it looks like. Yeah, I need to get it's some good pictures of it. Yeah, get get uh, Ari, get uh, Alex to take pictures of it, or somebody there, Jay Zill. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We need to do some more work too. Yeah, absolutely. I've been playing around with laser etching. I should send you some laser etch sections for you to play with. What? Laser etching. Nice. Yeah. How do you like that compared to like the Grawl stuff you used to do, Robert? Well, it is Grawl. It's just a different it's way of di doing Grawl. Different way of approaching it. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'll have to That's edit awesome. that out. It's, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's really neat. I, I feel like such a technical nerd with my little laser etcher and I'm sitting at my computer, you know. <laughs> sure. Are you able to, like, how deep are the lasers able to etch? Is it like a fume surface thing? Or are you able yeah. to actually carve? Uh, it, lasers don't cut glass very efficiently. They okay. can cut stuff that's sitting on glass. So they do. They can cut right through dichroic and they cut right through the fuming. Nice. And if you can make coatings like dichroic and fuming, that are make a good contrast. You get a really nice, a really nice result. The laser etching is capable of doing uh, far higher resolution than photomass, and so you can get you. super detailed, super detailed stuff. 
Huh. Is that how you did the Bitcoin piece? Yeah. That was an awesome piece. Thank you. Wow, that's neat. How powerful is that laser, if you don't mind? I don't know what you mean by powerful. I, it, uh, well, it's, the, a, it's a 60 watt. That's so, what I mean. Yeah. How many yeah. watts? Yeah, it's a 60 watt. And I, I run it. I rarely run it over 20% power. Either. Really? I don't, oh. Yeah. Well, you, you don't want to tear the glass up. The, the laser itself, I think the temperature must be 50,000 degrees or some ridiculous number like that. So wherever that little thing touches the glass, the glass is demolished. Gotcha. But when you sleeve it, when you sleeve it, you heal all of that. Okay. It's demolished on a very, very fine texture scale, so it heals up real nice. I got gotcha. you. So that's what happens when you sleeve over your 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 etching. It just all of that damage goes away. Yeah. Now, um, not to step away from that because it's really fascinating, but I love this technique that you do for shaping, where you kind of get a cold seal, you know, and and pull out and and puff and. I just think that's a really unique technique and very valuable. So everybody well, out there should what be. I'm doing is I put down a base heat, right? When you ever you heat glass, you heat it from the outside in. So I have to wait a second and let it chill. So but not so long that it, that I can't stick to it. But by waiting before I pull, the surface cools off and then the underneath is still molten and that enables me to pull the entire shape and not just the skin of the surface away. So there's a timing thing involved. Gotcha. So yeah, I, I remember the whole thing. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Um, I just I remember one thing. I've even mentioned it on uh, my own channel uh, from time to time, and it's something that you said that really stuck with me about glass. And you were like, "Glass is three things: it's balance, rhythm, and timing." And I've found that to be so fucking true, man. Over the years, I've really. Uh, part of my language <laughs> I really thought that I, there's been so many instances in which that's popped back into my head like yeah that's right man I got the balance and the rhythm and the timing and it worked and Robert it's was right like about that it's yeah. like a dance it's like a dance I like to compare it to juggling too okay because what a juggler does is he throws one ball up and then while that ball travels through the air, that buys him time. And he can do other stuff before he has to turn his attention back to that ball and catch it and then toss it up again. So we're doing the same thing. We heat the glass up and then that buys us time and we can mess around and work on it, work on it. We just got to catch it before it falls too far. Sure, and sure. Back up again. So it's like juggling in that way. I like that. Are you familiar with Kiva Ford? Oh, yeah. Yeah, are you are you aware that he's like a really amazing juggler? That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, right? Yeah, he's like he's really good. He's like a professional level juggler. <laughs> wow. He's yeah, it just makes me wonder, you know, it's like his work is so good. He's just did the the immaculate the you know, the example of a flame worker and uh yeah, I wonder how much that plays into it, you know, or is he's just dedicated at learning hand skills. Um I remember yeah, I... I think that being a musician also could contribute, you know, people who sure. like you because their connections, you know, nerve connections between your hands and your fingers and your and, and your arms and your mind. And those connections have to be built using something. So sure. I played guitar for many years before I picked up glass. And I, okay. think it helped, I think it helped me because the connections were already there. All right. I've tried to teach people who didn't have the connections, people who had hands like like clubs. You know, they had no manual dexterity whatsoever. I was surprised they could hold a fork and feed themselves. They were so clumsy with their hands. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, don't have I to put I... me out there like that, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> just... I'm you're, just playing. You're, you're a little better than that. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> so, yeah, Do you ever play the guitar to... nowadays? or I don't anymore. Now. I got Turned you. out I sucked at it. It took cool. me a long time to learn that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. You only need to be so good, you know, to, like, pick up chicks at a party or whatever. That's what most guys play guitars need to do. Pony. Yeah. I'm a one trick pony. This is what I do. I got gotcha. you. If you had a band name, though, what would it be? Oh, good God. <laughs> I'd have to think about that because I couldn't give yeah. you anything less than something really cool. Right. Mike, you didn't uh -huh. run this question by me. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that one. 
<laughs> now the, the, uh, the ram and the bull pushers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude, so good. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Hell yeah. Um, all right, so here you're adding some texture. The one that you brought had this exquisite back. You know that that man. Yeah. It looked amazing. Hours on. <laughs> I figured you must have. Now here you're doing kind of the quick and dirty version of that, I take it? Yeah, the quick and dirty version. I gotcha. So this is the opposite of the of that pulling move where I was shaping it, where I want the heat not to penetrate into the piece. I want it to just heat the surface so I can very quickly get it with the knife. Very, very quickly. And uh, so the that really aggressive flame that I have on my, my little mirage there is, is good for that. It eats the surface very rapidly and before it gets a chance to penetrate too deeply into the glass, allowing okay. me to make it crease without deforming the piece too much. I got you. Makes a lot of sense. Is your mirage your tr torch of choice, Robert? Um, I work on my little mirage that you see here. No, wait, that's not my mirage, is it? I borrowed one for this. I have a little mirage, and I have my 40 mil Herbie, and I bounce back and forth between the two. My go-to daily driver is the Herbie. I love that torch. Nice. And it's because, like you say, the way it treats, the way it treats color, the air option, and just the way it heats the glass. It, it seems to heat the glass and get the glass to behave the way you want it to behave not getting the surface as hot as another torch. Like if you ever look at the way the Herbie heats the glass, it doesn't cook the surface as hot as like a, like a GTT does. That's one of the things I love about it for the stringer work. It does yeah. not penetrate the surface like or any other torch really. Yeah, it doesn't cook that surface. It, it penetrates deep into the glass really, really well, but it doesn't cook the surface. Well, that's really nice. I used to own a 40 mil, but, you know, I mostly do Marini at this point, so it, yeah. it kind of just sat on the more shelf a lot. Plane. Yeah. Yeah, I use a Delta Elite for most of my work. Uh-huh. Now, here you're shaping out that neck to kind of match that angle like it like it was, like you were doing the opposite of on the head earlier. Is that right? Yeah. 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 This is the other side of it, and uh, I know it's going to come in at an angle, and it needs to be a natural transition. So I, I work for a bit on that opening too, to get them to match up. Sure. And that makes a lot of sense. I learned how to do my uh, hollow attachments off watching one of your demos. I believe you were attaching legs or something and talking about how to make the attachment the exact way that you really want it to form up. And God, that's taught me uh -huh. so much. Nice. Yeah, you've got some really great demos out there, Robert, like the Master Series one from Salem. And it was like uh, an amazing honor to film uh, your hollow hand demo at the gas conference in 2019. And yeah, you know, I was mentioning when we started how, how important this relationship with the Glass Art Society has been over the years. And, you know, I talked about the year that we did this official uh, broadcast. But in the meantime, in the years since, you know, they, they, they gave me the, the go ahead, you know, with artist permission uh, to capture these things as well. And they allowed me to, to you know, th this kind of free reign to capture stuff like that. And it's added to the vernacular, you know, for, for all of us. I really appreciate it. I appreciate gas so much. Um, yeah, it, it means the world to have, have had this, their, their investment in me come full circle here to where we're able to share this uh, demo here today as part of the gas conference. It, it just, it means the world. No, that's fantastic. I wasn't aware of the, how you guys were working together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, there, there is now an official partnership in which we've just kind of has just come together. And, you know, this is kind of the first dose of, you know, magical things that I've had the opportunity to film and that, that I hope to share with a different audience and really help bring these worlds together. Um, the community that's grown around my work, it, we've always, you know, had an open door, you know, kind of policy, and I want it to be a place where it can be a melting pot. But it's also called Torch Talk, and, you know, <laughs> it's like... Here's the well. It's, it's a flame worker oriented environment. Yeah, this is really... Let me be quiet for a second here. 
It looks like you got that and kind of pushed in and out to get it stuck as best as you could. Yeah, I had to make sure it welded all the way around because it sh it should just meet. If I if I set it up properly, it should just meet. Gotcha. And I yeah. need it to be. I need it to be. I forgot my blow hose for this <laughs> demo too, so I'm having to puff differently than I normally would. I got gotcha. you. Now I spend quite a bit of time going back and fixing fixing the weld. I think I even need to touch. It. There might even be a small hole. Yeah, I think there was. You add a little bit of glass there. Yeah, I just have it shut. Sure. You don't want to add a lot of glass when there's a hole. You just want it just a little bit. Because in the end, it should all disappear. Yeah, it'll flow back together and homogenize. Yeah, I want it to be a smooth, like a smooth transition. Sure. And leaving that hole is probably better than over pushing and accumulating yes, too yeah. much material. Better to, have a, better to have a hole than a fold. Okay, nice. I like that. Now, this is blackjack, so you can actually see through it. See how you can see through it? Right, it's like striking a striking black. Yeah, it's a striking black, and when it's hot, it's actually transparent. So you can see right through it there. That's a good shot. That's that's what I see, too. I'm looking at that wall, and I want all the wrinkles and folds to go away. Yeah. Right, that's a nice little advantage there. You've done this enough that you probably would have known when the inside was good, but for mortals uh, like us, you know. Well, I, I can tell, but... Usually you find out when it cracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not like an insult to say that you've probably had so many of these pieces crack because you just have so much experience. You know, it's not like you're a bad flame worker, but once you've had things, things break so often that you get that, you know, that sense yeah. uh, for what it needs to be. And, you know, it's like, what's that saying? Like the masters failed more times than the beginners tried. Or whatever oh, that's I think. True. Yeah. This is my. These are the ears. So this is my ear trick. Yeah, and I like that move you just did there, where you were rolling against the L Marver with the reamer inside of it. That that's such a great move to even out the walls and give yourself yeah. a nice even end. I do these ears. It's just your straight, just straight hollow seals. And then I take the resulting cone-shaped bubble and shape that into an ear. Yeah, this is a pretty fascinating move Rather right than here. trying to make the ear and then stick it on. Yeah, that's an interesting approach. That's like a, that's an advanced well, approach, I would say. Well, for me, the hard part is the seal, getting the seal perfect. That's shaping the ear is nothing. Getting I the seal you. perfect, so that's where I put my energy and effort into it. And then once I got it on there perfectly, then I can just shape it here real quick. It's interesting to think about. It's so pretty. Yeah, that's really cool. Now, Robert, um, we crossed paths uh, recently when you were judging the glass games comp recently, you know, minus the whole Rona period of time that just doesn't exist to me anymore. Um, but anyways, you recently judged the glass games. Uh, did, does any part of you want to take the judge entrant option, like Punty, for example, who, who competed as a judge? Does any part of you want to do that and kind of flex on these kids in the 2022 Masters? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not on your life, not for a million dollars. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. No, actually, you know, I... I have very little interest in, in, in doing these competitions. I, I think they're wonderful things, but they are not for me. They're okay. just not. Is, is this always the case, or do you think a younger, yeah, think, a hungrier Robert Nicholson? This. I've been asked many times. Matty White has been bugging me yeah. to be a competitor okay. for years. Okay. And so I just this... will not do it. Oh, okay. Well, at least it's been on your radar. That's yeah, yeah, fair I'm, enough. I'm aware of it. I don't mind yeah. judging, and I and I certainly don't mind watching, but uh, I don't want to be out there. I don't want to be out there. It's too much for me. This old man. That's too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> See, you look, take a look at take a look at my comp competition sitting right here. Sure, it, sure. Would you want to go up against that? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> not. <my> ass. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, no, Shayla is a heavy hitter. And in fact, you know, that leads me to a question for you, Shayla. Um, I remember the one of the oh, recent glass wait, games. Wait, 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 wait. 
of the eye. This, this is the eye. Yeah, yeah. This is where she, we're back to Shayla. Yeah, I can't do this. So, so I brought it to Shayla and asked her to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the secret is ketamine. Not as plain. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get real high. That's a good job. And I learned from watching her do this. I learned. And I've gone home and I've since been able to figure out how to do it myself. I've, I have successfully, I don't think they're as good and, and clean as Shayla's were, but I've been successfully able to do it myself from watching watching you do it. So I learned that trick from you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. The stringer work is really main thing is flame control. You got to not work in the flame. And uh, when I'm applying that stringer, I'm actually working in a part of the flame that's bouncing off of the glass. Right. You work in the bounce. Okay. That's yeah, interesting. Flame and really just controlling the way that stringer is laid down. Yeah. Yeah, it's really impressive what you do. Thank you. Yeah, that that was the trick that I learned watching you. Is don't don't heat the stringer; it won't work. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, that's that's too hard. off the face. There's no way to control a hot stringer. Yeah. Instead, learn there that there is no stringer. See, I'm all excited. I said, "Damn, that was good." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, this 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 collaborative demo on the stage was just a really magical thing to have been able to capture. I really appreciate you guys letting me, you know, stick this stick this camera and and document this and to be able to share it. It's it's a real honor. I really appreciate you guys. Oh, look at that little snake attachment. That's yeah, that was slick. Cobra. That was slick. Right so in the middle of his head. Kobe, or whatever it. <laughs> really <laughs> magical getting to see you work, Robert. Like, I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. Yeah, me too. I I learned a lot. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Speaking of, um, Robert, I learned with you in a class that you taught with Lace Face, and you've since taught and collaborated with an amazing list of pipe makers. I wanted to ask, what do you look for in the work of an artist that you'd like to collaborate or teach with? Originality. Uh, yeah, originality is probably the, the number one thing. Uh, okay. High skill level is always nice. Sure, sure. But uh, originality is, is really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody where we can blend styles, where we complement each other. You know, I, I've always said that there's two kinds of combined work. One of them is a collaboration. The other one is more of a mashup. It's a <laughs> mashup when you just send somebody prep and they make something out of your prep, or you take your stuff and stick it on his stuff. They, they, you know, that's a yeah. mashup. A collaboration is when the two of you work together to make something that neither one of you could make on your own. That's a collaboration, and that's the type of thing that I look for. Okay. That's very interesting. I like that. Yeah, that was that was a great answer, Robert. Thank you. <laughs> I had a hard time explaining that same thing recently. You said it very eloquently. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I I enjoy collaboration for that reason because I end up making things or being involved in the building of things that I could never never do in a million years on my own. And uh, you can. The, the collaboration that won us the award at this show is a great example of that. Uh, nice. com uh, co collabing with the Subliminal Boys. There's no way that I could have made that piece. It's just impossible. Any of okay. us, we needed the team to do it. Sure. Yeah, their work is incredible. Yeah, when you, I think this when you is get the mouthpiece, the right? Yes, this is like where you're going to curve this up. I think this is actually a really nice move, like the way you're soaking this heat in so that you can make this bend evenly. You know, like This is really nice to watch. You're kind of almost shaping it too as it goes because it's like, you know, it's a little smaller at the base. This is slick. I think I might have got it a little thin. If I had to do this part over right now, I'd make it a lot thicker. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, we only had so much material to work with, so you got you know you got what you needed out of it. But yeah, one of the like things that. I really like about your sculpture is how thin it is. Honestly, like there's not. I any... learned to work thin. I learned, that's how I was taught. Yeah, you can tell you really take those you know those Venetian techniques longest point. It's it's really incredible. It's a, it, I think it's a little safer too because thin walls don't hold so much stress. Absolutely. That's interesting. Now see how I tip my chin up when I'm looking? You know why I do that? Because of my trifocals. <laughs> <laughs> the close up vision is in the bottom part of the glasses. <laughs> I got you. Okay, okay. You can tell any old fart who looks at close things that way, they've got trifocals on. <laughs> <laughs> Some more stringer work. Yeah, this is some more stringer work. I think this is going to be the joint, and we're going to watch you um, after it was already the rest of it was filled in. We'll watch you cook that in and and kind of do a bit of the joint shaping, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So here it's already gotten quite a bit of heat soaked in. As I was bouncing back and forth between you and Robert, so you know it's like we can't get it all. But right. I'm I'm really I'm I've really I've enjoyed watching this right now and you know even when i was editing it editing it actually for the second time because i did a, a cut for the torch pass that was lost because i lost the hard drive broke but the footage was safe i have like double copies of all that stuff so footage was fine it was just the three days of editing but anyways <laughs> those patterns are so incredible because they're so sharp you know yeah. most people have to do flips to get sharp patterns, but shalers are on the outside and they are sharp as a tap. Thank yeah. You. yeah. So you're going in with like a joint reamer, is that right? Yeah, I believe that's a 14 millimeter brass tool and I'm using to size it out. Yeah. I already worked it and I, I try and originally build the shape to mimic what my vision of it is. So I was going for a 14 millimeter joint. So Okay. It's pretty much to the size there, so I'm just gently heating it and letting it cool and making sure it's about perfect. Nice, nice. The fire breath there. And then you do a cold seal here on the end, is that right? Yeah, I like to do cold seals. Um, it's a nice, easy way to uh, give me a handle to attach this with. It also gives me a point that I can bridge off of later. Okay, I got you. I see you also like to live dangerously. Whatever. <laughs> it, 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 cold seals are only ever a problem if you flash them after they get cold. Right, yeah. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever seen Gonzo, but that dude's fucking crazy. He'll cold seal to a mouthpiece on one of his rigs. And oh, yeah. Yeah, Blake's, Blake's the homie. Yeah, big shout outs to Blake. Gonzo yeah. Glass. Cold but, seal king. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> I've seen some fail that way, but for the most part, he pulls that shit off, so. Yeah, everything fails at one point or another. Totally. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. about that humbling moment. But he's like, you know, I think he kind of, he embodies what Robert was talking about earlier, about how, like, you should be pushing yourself. You know, you should be working at the edge of, you know, he's always trying to do new things with his pieces, and that's where they fail. It's not like he's fucking up the shit he's done 20 times. No. So, yeah. <laughs> That's what keeps him on the edge of making at least yeah. some great glass. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I, I, I like him. I respect his work. Me too. He's one of them guys I always, you know, enjoy running into at Melt uh, specifically. I remember crossing paths with him from the very first year, and like I was mentioning earlier, that's one of these events that really opened their arms to the community that, you know, kind of formed around uh, the, the show and, and the coverage that I was doing, and you don't forget those those shows that had you out in the beginning, you know? And that was Glass Vegas and East Coast Melt. So major shout outs to them. Now here's this huge can again. You're getting ready to set it up to seal that the sculpted Anubis to, right? Yeah, I'm setting it okay. up and uh like with Robert's attachments, I try and have that uh seal opening just about the same exact size as what we're gonna throw Robert's neck on. So hopefully getting it all lined up. I've put the piece on, it looks like about a 19 or 20 mil tube. That way I have a nice strong handle to attach and bridge to. Gotcha. 
Nice, Rock nice. Going over here with this Nubis and. Yeah, yeah. And shout outs to uh, Ethan, Wendy, Danny White in the background there. It was painting the whole time. We've seen him in the background quite a bit. The man does it all. It's almost unfair. <laughs> and he's good looking too. He is. Well, what can you say, man? He is pretty. He is pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ethan Wendy. You pretty motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he he's always a pleasure to cross paths with too. It's like fuck yeah, nice cat. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, some big boss moves right wow. here. Yeah, it looked like he widened it up for you there so that those holes would match. Is that right? Yep. Nice. Very good. Hell yeah. Now, Shayla, you recently took part in a reality show style competition that's going to air later this year. Uh, Jerome Baker put it on called Operation Pipe Dreamers. And without getting into any spoilers, since it hasn't come out yet, I wanted to ask, was the experience of doing this kind of reality show thing positive for you? And was anybody kicked out of the house? You know, it was a it was an incredibly positive experience, as with any... Uh first time doing anything we were all kind of not sure what to expect and i was completely blown away by the camera crew the mm -hmm. way it was set up it was all just it was really cool it was a little uh, unnerving at first because like i'm used to having you with one camera and sure. you're homie and i can sit there and talk with you but like we had like i don't know there was like eight to twelve cameras in our face at any yeah. time camera guys in the way as you're trying to get in the kiln and so it was, a, it was a really crazy experience but got to hang out with a lot of people that i haven't spent a lot of time with before which is really cool and mm -hmm. made some friends and yeah overall I'm, I'm honored to have been a part of it and to have experienced it very cool very cool shout out to drone baker and punty and everyone who put so much work into making that happen i really uh, I think everyone's gonna love it. Should really very give good. The public a nice view of pipe makers. When's All it right. come out? Yeah, <laughs> that's the magic question. Uh, right. Still working on a couple things, so hopefully here in the next couple months. Very I can't good. Wait to see it. Now here you're uh, setting up what's called a bridge uh, from yes. the top to the bottom, so you can cook the seal in on the neck better. Is that right? Or not the neck, but where the where the body connects to the can? Is that right? Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. And, uh, if I was doing this, you know, today, I would have set this up a little different. I would have probably had some bridge work done already so that this didn't mm. take so long. Oh, mm. I got you. Yeah, sure, sure. You're like kind of working against the clock here because, you know, but you do have a Bunsen out. Is that what's kind of allowing mm. you to take this long? Yeah, the Bunsen is helping a lot. Um, okay. And that's kind of keeping the whole entire piece warm. That can is pretty big and it's been out of the kiln for a while. And then I'm also really nervous about messing up robert's work um, <laughs> of course yeah i was no, that's a, a real thing a new one in 90 minutes starstruck <laughs> working with robert and super excited and stoked and uh you know a little out of my element so it was gotcha uh, it was cool. see it separated yeah. too yeah i remember right this here, that seal separated i didn't Ooh, look at that i see that well enough and robert yeah. comes in now it's right. an official collab yeah, look at that. Burdens, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, this is really cool. What's the saying? It's not what you can make, it's what you can fix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, there's that's real. So yeah, right here, I'm kind of keeping that bridge uh, warm, which allows Robert to kind of help me out and adjust it there. Okay. He's wearing the Kevlar gloves so he doesn't burn him. I almost burnt him. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is an awesome example of teamwork. Yeah, there we go. But yeah. And that, really that's one of the things when you get like hands on with mini torches is like you really got to be careful of your, the person you're working with. And like I've yeah. been burnt multiple times. I've burnt people multiple times. It's... I've burned Eugene once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, He's such a nice guy, though. He didn't even take it. He, he didn't even complain, yeah, right? He wasn't too mad. 
See, now that's, now that's an interesting demo. Something's gone wrong, and it's taken both of our yeah. total concentration to fix it. Now it's interesting. Yeah, here's your NASCAR moment, folks, right at the end. <laughs> we made you wait for it. <laughs> the titanium pick yeah. in there, kind of sealing that bad boy shot. Right, yeah, yeah. we're just moving it that was glass around. It yeah. was a really awkward situation. It was fighting us. Yeah, it happens. But you guys are winners. And well, I'm thinking back at it, like I think I was using Jet Black and you were using Jack Black. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, true. Yeah. Yep. Something going on. That's interesting to think yep. about. It might have been it might have been smart to have a little dab of clear or something in there as a transition mm -hmm. or maybe yeah. cobalt or something that was a little less because those two colors are very, very different. On yeah. like back on it now, I bet that was kind of what our issue was, but at the time, it didn't cross my mind. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, it, you trust the manufacturers that the COE and everything but, should be right, you know? Like, so you may as well give it a college try before having to do all those extra steps, right? The original prep that I lost was Blackjack. Okay. I mean, it was Jet Black. Oh, and okay. We both decided we were going to work with Jet Black, and then I, when, I, 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 when I had to put it together fast, I knew I couldn't do it fast with, with uh, Jet mm. Black. Which that is why I opted for sense. the blackjack because I could go fast with the blackjack. Hmm. Look how pretty that can looks when the hot glass glare is glowing through it. Yeah, yeah. It's like like you were talking about trying to make glass ugly, man. Like even while it's being made, you know, you can't you can't fight the beauty of this material and how evocative it is. I feel very lucky to be able to film something like this where you know the whole time it's generally beautiful and. Especially moments like that where the, the heat is lighting up the patterns and yeah, yeah this See, is Shayla's right too that if we had done this again we would set the bridge up differently. With only one bridge, there's that piece of, that rod is flexing and the whole piece is moving even though it's bridged. I gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. Two bridges or a thicker bridge or a different bridge would have been better. Right. Two bridge. Yeah, I, well, I, I do, what I like to do is use a hollow bridge. So I'll use nine mil or twelve yeah, mil. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm. Much stronger. Gotcha. It doesn't flex. Gotcha. But that looks like it might be six millimeter rod. Yeah, it was and whatever I, I had on the bench at the time. I think. Right, definitely yeah. flex. That's cost me a Sherlock or two. That's for sure. <laughs> Doing like the two piece seal or whatever. Um, bridge work is something I've fought against my entire career, and I'm only really now giving into it. But mm -hmm. I do prefer to use like a 10 or 12 mil rod or hollow hollow blow tubes are the way to go. All right, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you guys are just working this in. That's the sharp flame hand torch, is that right? Yeah, that's the Bethlehem sharp flame. I really enjoy that torch for doing hollow work or hollow seals, like working the drains on a recycler that torch is amazing for just kind of getting that glass the perfect temperature where you can just mm. let it flow and move and allow gravity to kind of do its thing nice nice i use one on the lathe nice mm. it recently the shot got a, flame is a good lathe torch very good shayla i remember uh the glass games where you won like 10 trophies <laughs> Among a lot of others over the years, I had I have to ask: Is there a dedicated room in your house for awards and prizes like Quincy Jones with his like twenty eight Grammys? Well, I don't have twenty eight of them. Uh, <laughs> somewhere around yeah. like fifteen or so, <laughs> but I do have a display case with uh, my trophies and yeah. like I have a belt now. I have like a WWE wrestling. You have a belt. belt? Dope. Yeah. Oh my God! Where who? Where did you get the belt? Which comp? Which that, competition had a belt? That was Pipe Classic. Oh, it was the Pipe Classic belt, man. T Tito, shout out to Tito Burn, man. Of course, it was fucking Tito, dude. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, it up. But I got a freaking belt. It's one of my favorite trophies, and That's so I awesome. have a display case with my trophies in it. All right, very nice. I figured you must have had something, but you know, just an opportunity to point out that you win virtually everything. Uh, you know, gotta give the boys a run for their money. Yeah, you do. You really do. And yeah, it's it's been a pleasure to see it all go down. Thanks, yeah. bro. Yeah, of course, of course. Robert, you have said that the teacher learns the most in a class. How do you draw knowledge out of your students and help them engage in that back and forth exchange of knowledge? Well, because 
a class is more is like a banquet. It's like a potluck dinner. Everybody brings something. And so it's not so much that I compel the students to teach me things. It's that I have the I have the most experience and so I have the knowledge the, the broadest knowledge base. And that's why I'm the teacher. But that also makes it so that I am capable of learning the most. The more you know, the more you're capable of learning. Mm. That's just the law. That's the way it works. And I so that. I learn more simply because I have a broader base of knowledge. There's gotcha. no end. There's no end to it. That's my favorite saying is that knowledge is infinite and life is for learning. So that no matter how much you learn, you always have an infinite amount more that you are capable of learning. I love it. Well, what a great way to, to wrap this this up is, as this piece hits the kiln. I think that, that was the end of the demo time. Um, yeah, we just made it. Yeah. Switch back to you guys. Um, I want to thank both of you for joining me and uh, for making this experience possible for, you know, for me, for the Boro community, for the gas conference. And this whole thing uh, has really been just something super special and has, has brought what I've been trying to provide for the glass world, you know, this type of coverage, it's really brought it full circle. Thank you guys for helping me make that possible. I really, really appreciate y'all. Well, Thank thanks for inviting us. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. I had a great time working with you, Shayla. We got to do it again sometime. Yeah, I look forward to it. And, yeah. uh, thanks, Mike, for hooking us up with this great opportunity and giving us no some great worries. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's because you let me put this camera in your face, you know, that I had this opportunity and all that. Like, I'm telling you, the gratitude, uh, if, if it flows both ways, great. But just please understand that it's like a waterfall from me to y'all. Y'all are the best. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I think that we'll wrap it up there. Uh, again, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Shayla. Thank you, uh, the Glass Art Society. Uh, much love to everyone out there. And I hope the, that y'all enjoy the rest of the conference. Much love, y'all. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Peace.